Hi, and welcome to Discipleship with Father Rob Gallia. My name is Father Rob, and I'm here to help you understand our Catholic faith in a simple but deep way. Very often we go through life trying to understand what God wants of us, trying to understand our faith, the scriptures, but we don't spend time listening and exploring the Word of God, but also understanding and exploring the traditions of the Catholic Church. Today, during this series, I'm going to talk about Mary, Miriam. Have you heard the name Miriam? We often think of Mary, our mother, as a mother crowned in glory, surrounded by the angels and the saints, the one who intercedes for us, Mary, the mother of God. But Mary was not known, as you know, as Mary in her hometown. She was known as Miriam. Miriam, who was a little girl from the back city of Nazareth. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, Jesus came out of Nazareth, but so did Mary. And so in this series today, we're going to try and explore and understand the Mary of history. Now, a few points as we journey through this is that we're going to explore and understand how she did not come to full revelation of who Jesus was at the Annunciation. She struggled with understanding who Jesus was and what Jesus had to do in this life. But eventually she resigned to it, she understood. And we're gonna go through this journey of her, of her wrestling with God as she tries to get to know, to love and to serve Jesus. So as we continue this time, let's stop. Let's stop for a moment and ask for the intercession of Mary. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, that was brought to us to this world through the yes of Mary. Lord, we want even at this moment to say yes to you, to be able to understand what you are saying, that we may have listening hearts and ears to what you are saying so that we like Mary, may love and understand the will and the heart of Jesus. Holy Spirit, inspire us and give us your grace. As we pray together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. When you think of Mary, who do you think about? Do you think about Mary who is crowned in heaven? Mary who is portrayed very often as this beautiful, pure woman, whom she is, that she is. There, a warrior woman praying, interceding for us. Is this who you think of Mary and how you think of Mary? Or maybe you think of Mary as Miriam, a young girl who struggled, who was confused, who was trying to seek and understand the heart and the will of the Father by saying yes to Archangel Gabriel, someone who didn't understand Jesus and struggled with her own faith. Do you ever think about Miriam? Well, let's explore Miriam of Nazareth. Let's try and understand her in the context of history. Now, well, let's start with where she came from. And this, I'm going to tell you anything new. I know that you know a lot of this, but Mary, she was someone who was born in Nazareth and her father's name was Joachim and her, his, her mother's name was Anne. We know also through scripture that she had a cousin named Elizabeth. We know a little bit about her family, but also we know that she was a very young girl. She was a young girl when she d discovered the the call over her life when Archangel Gabriel came and stood in front of her and said that you will bear a child and your child's name will be Emmanuel, will be Jesus, your child will be the son of God. And she said yes, but before she said yes, she said this, she said, how can this be? How can this be? I am a virgin. I didn't have any relations with any man. So how can it be? So we start from the premise, from the very start. Her journey with God starts with that of confusion. She's confused and she asks God questions. She doubts what the archangel is saying. And she says, how can it be? But even through her confusion, 
she continues to say yes to God. How inspirational is that? So very often we need answers from God before we say yes. But Mary, she said yes. She was confused. She was lost. And the confusion didn't go once she said yes. She was still confused. She was still anxious. She was a young girl, 14 years old, at most 16 years old. And she didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to handle this news. But she trusted that at the end of the day, God had everything in his hands. He was in control. Now, some traditions say that Mary, even though brought up by, by Joachim and Anne, and when she was very young, maybe 11 or 12 years old, was dedicated to the temple. Some say that she actually lived at the temple. And this is maybe where Archangel Gabriel appeared to her. Now, we don't have evidence of this, but this is certainly um, believable. This is certainly something that, that could very well have happened. When I was in Jerusalem recently, and the tour guide was saying that it's common belief, even amongst the Christians in Palestine, that Mary lived at the temple. She was dedicated to the temple. So she was already set apart. And so she comes to this place where she was praying, she was sitting, Archangel appears, but she starts with this journey of confusion. Now at this point, she's already betrothed, betrothed at 14, 16 years old, she's betrothed to Joseph. Now let's talk a little bit about Saint Joseph because sometimes we don't understand. Joseph was not, first of all, an old man. Sometimes he was often portrayed as an old man because we in, in the Catholic tradition believe that Mary remained a virgin, even after she gave birth to Jesus. And to portray that, many artists depict Joseph as an old man so that he won't be of temptation to Mary. And so that Joseph, being the saintly man, would have lost his mojo so that he doesn't need to worry about Mary and having relations with Mary. Well, no, no. You see, Joseph also would have been maybe in late, late 20s. Now, we believe as well that Joseph was probably married before and maybe his wife died. And the reason why we believe this is because there was that moment, you know, when uh, they said, your mother and brother. Now, probably it was from Joseph, Joseph who had had um, children before. Now, think about this in the context, if this was so, in the context of Miriam. Now, Miriam had to, she was betrothed to Joseph, and she also, like many experiences in our lives, have to take in the children of a previous marriage. And she had to look after them, and I know that she would have loved as, as her own. And so they, she brought them into the house. Many scholars believe that this could very well be true. Now, Again, let's continue talking about Joseph so that we can understand Mary. See, Joseph probably died very early. The life expectancy at the time of Jesus was 30 or 40 years old. The last we hear of Joseph was the time when Jesus was lost in the temple and Joseph and Mary went and they reprimanded Jesus. And when Jesus says, don't you know that I will be in my father's home, that I will be doing the will of my father? And Mary again comes to this place of confusion. She couldn't understand why Jesus would do this to her. And she's probably questioning God, why did you allow your son to escape and to cause us so much anxiety? So this was Mary as well, trying to understand the heart and the will of Jesus. So that's the last time we hear of St. Joseph. And in fact, all throughout the rest of the scriptures, we hear of Mary appearing in different places and, and talking to Jesus and interacting, but never Joseph. Also at the crucifixion, Joseph is not present. Now, if he were alive, he would most certainly be present, but he wasn't. So in all probability, Joseph died when he was probably in his late 30s or early 40s. Because Mary didn't remarry, there weren't social benefits. So who ha was looking after Mary? And guess who? It was probably Jesus. And Jesus was working as a tecton, as a, as a carpenter, as a builder. And he probably continued to work in that business to save up enough money to look after his mom. 
In fact, a lot, again, a lot of scholars say why Jesus didn't begin his ministry until he was 30 years old, which was late, which was sort of the life expectancy. They were considered old people at the age of 30 and 40. He didn't begin his ministry until he was 30, probably, possibly, because he wanted to make sure that his mother was looked after. And so he begins this ministry late again, and this shows the beautiful love that Jesus had for Mary, that for his family, and that he put his family first for a while and, and made sure that they were looked after. And so Mary also went through hardships and pain. She tried to understand her son Jesus. And eventually, as he began his ministry, she started to realize that Jesus had enemies, that Jesus had people around him who didn't like him. And when people didn't like him, the well, things they used to do was they used to complain to Mary. In fact, there's an episode that comes to mind where in, in, in this scripture, Matthew 12, 46 to, to 50, I, this, open your Bible in this verse. This is the moment when Jesus is in Capernaum and he's, he's preaching and Mary is sent by people who are complaining to Jesus and she's sent there basically to restrain him, to quieten him. And so she goes and Jesus is surrounded by apostles and surrounded by people and she goes in with James and John and they go in and they try to restrain Jesus and they try to tell him to reason with him. Jesus, you're causing a lot of trouble. What are you doing? Mary had these questions. She had these doubts as well. She wondered why Jesus was causing so much trouble. But then, like again, a sword to her heart. What does Jesus say? She, she, Jesus tells his disciples, Hey, my mother and my brothers are anyone who does my will, the will of the Father. That must have been so painful for Mary. Hearing those words that, hey, Family is great. Family is important. I'll dedicate my life. I'll make sure I'm looking after you. But at the end of the day, what is more important is people who follow the will of the Father. And she would have heard. I know she would have heard and wondered why. Why would Jesus say something like this? But slowly Mary began to understand the heart of Jesus. She began to understand that at the end of the day, he was called to serve people. He was called to serve God, even though he continued to love her and to continue to care for her. But he put the kingdom of God before her and she slowly had to resign to that. There's an episode in the, in the scriptures where um, John 2, 5, I know you know that scripture verse, which says Jesus is in Cana and he, he's minding his own business. He's at a wedding and Mary comes up to him and says, Fill, fill the, give them some wine. And so he does, but at the command of Mary, at the command of Mary. In this point, at this point, Mary seems to understand the ministry of Jesus more than Jesus himself, because Jesus says, it is not my time. But Mary insists, and she says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. At this point, it seems that Mary has begun to understand the heart of Jesus. She began to understand the, the call over Jesus' life even more than he does. And it's not unreasonable as well to think that a mother sometimes knows the call over our lives more than we know ourselves. You know, my mother knew I was going to become a priest before I even thought about the priesthood. She knew because she used to see in prayer that I was called to the priesthood. In fact, when I told her that I was going to become a priest, she didn't look surprised at all. She looked at me like, finally, you realized it. Now, this is the heart of a mother. Eventually, Mary understood the will, understood the will of the father, the plan of the father in the life of her son, Jesus. And she starts to encourage him. But you see, the journey doesn't end here. Mary, Mary, Miriam continues to journey with Jesus, but, and her heart continues to, to uh, explore the heart 
of the Father through the life of Jesus. And she continues to wrestle with the Father, especially as the persecution continues and increases to the point where now he's starting to be really put down and there's a lot of gossip against him and eventually he's arrested and she's standing there at the foot of the cross. She's standing there questioning God the Father again, confusion again, where she started off. How could this be? How could this be that Jesus there on the cross, her heart torn to a million pieces? And while everyone is spitting at him and jeering at him and making fun of him and mocking him, she's standing there overhearing all the mockery, all the torture, and she's helpless. She can do nothing. But what happens? You see, part of the last words of Jesus are those words and those beautiful words where she tells John, John, this is your mother. And, and he says to, to her, this is your son. Even at this point, he wants to look after Mary. He wants to make sure that her future is secure because she couldn't work. She couldn't look after herself. She needed someone to care for her. And this is where Jesus gave her John the Apostle. How beautiful, how wonderful that Jesus loved Mary so much and that he cared for her so much. But also how wonderful that Mary struggled to know the heart of Jesus, to resign to the heart of Jesus, as we struggle to know the heart of Jesus and the mind of Jesus. Mary of Nazareth, Miriam, she knows you. She knows confusion. She knows and, uh, uh, how difficult it is to know and to love Jesus. But the beautiful thing, thing is that we can walk with Mary towards Jesus, that we together can understand the heart and the will of Jesus as we journey with Mary to, to, through his life and through his death and eventual resurrection. Mary didn't stop her ministry there. She continued to nurture, to be a mother to the apostles. She continued to serve the church. She continued to be there even at times of, of Pentecost, the times of the Holy Spirit, to unfold the will of, of God. In fact, you see the Gospel of Luke. Luke never actually met Jesus. He discovered Jesus after he had died and risen from the dead. But most, they, uh, most scholars believe that most of what is written in Luke is basically an extended interview with Mary. Mary wanted to proclaim Jesus even after his resurrection. And this is our call as well, to know Mary, to depend on her intercession, but also to know that she struggled too, to know, to love and to serve Jesus. And so together, let us pray. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To Thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To Thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, Thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of Thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. And we ask your blessing on us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>